Hi all, welcome you all back to Law Cities. The topic we take up today for discussion is Chapter 4 of the IPC which deals with general exceptions. Here we shall cover the scope and ambit of general exceptions and its classification as excusable and justifiable defenses. It is chapter 4 of the IPC starting with section 76 to 106 which deals with general exceptions. And as the term suggests, it exempts persons from criminal liability. And why is it so? Let's evaluate. We know that in order to constitute a crime, there must be both actus reus and mens rea. That is an act which is forbidden by law or an illegal omission along with a blameworthy mental condition. Both of these should cooperate with each other in order to constitute a crime. Which means that an act which is devoid of the requisite mental element will not constitute a crime, isn't it? Chapter 4 has enumerated several such instances and hence it exempts persons from criminal liability. It is to be noted here that all these exceptions starting from section 76 to 106 overrides the offences which are stated in the code. Which means that they should run as exceptions to each of the provisions provided in the statute. And in order to obviate such repetitions, they had come up with a separate general exceptions chapter which in fact limits and overrides all the provisions of the code. Clear? Alright. So now let us see what are the two broad classifications of general exceptions or what are the two categories of general exceptions. They are excusable defenses and justifiable defenses. It is true that both of these types of general exceptions ultimately exonerate the individuals from criminal liability. But conceptually they are different. Excusable defenses deal with those general exceptions where the criminal acts are excused for the want of mens rea, for the want of requisite mens rea. Say for example, acts committed by infants, insane persons, intoxicated persons, etc. Whereas justifiable defenses are those general exceptions where the criminal acts are justified due to certain meritorious considerations, as in the case of necessity or private defense of body or property. We shall learn in detail all of these in our coming lectures, so stay tuned to our channel. Okay, so now let us see the burden of proof aspect of general exceptions. Generally, the burden of proving the guilt of the accused lies on the prosecution. The public prosecutor is bound to prove the actus reus, the mens rea, causation, motive, etc. etc. But is that so the case with the general exceptions? No, the burden of proving the fact that the particular criminal act fell within the general exceptions chapter very well lies on the accused himself. And here a quick glance at the different general exceptions we have in our chapter 4 of the IPC. Mistake of fact, judicial acts, accident, infancy, insanity, intoxication, consent, trivial acts and private defense. Till we meet next with each of these defenses. Bye-bye.